In this video, I want to talk you through setting up your Turner G9X and your auxiliary uh, F mode switch, your three mode switch, to configure your APM 2.5 uh, for different three different flight modes. I did a previous video that showed actually using the gear switch to toggle between two different flight modes, but I've received uh, several emails and uh, quite a few comments asking how to do this. And actually, to, to be honest, it it's taken me a while to figure it out, so I wanted to go ahead and share that with you. Okay, before we get started with the Turnigy transmitter configuration, I want to point out the what's basically the most uh, critical part of this setup of being able to configure your three-way uh, switch for, for different flight modes. So if you'll notice, I have channel 6 on my uh, Turnigy 9X receiver going to... Uh, pin or port 5 on the APM board. So you have your standard um, inputs over here, 1, 2, 3, and 4, and then number 5 is what is basically used in the APM mission planner. Channel 5 is used for um, setting your flight mode. So based on the PWM that uh, is sent from the receiver to the APM board, that dictates uh, what flight mode you can set. So we'll get into all that, but that's just the one uh, most important piece before you get into configuration. Channel six from the receiver to uh, port five on your APM. This has the standard Turnigy firmware. Now I know some people have loaded ER9X and there's a, I think there's another firmware load. So um, all that to say that this really I don't know how this applies to ER9X. I've never loaded that firmware before. So just keep that in mind as you're going, you know, watching the video that this is the standard firmware configuration. So uh, your, you know, results may differ based on what firmware you're using. Okay, for starters, I have an APM uh, model in my Turnigy. Now, this is just kind of a default uh, profile that I set up. So we're going to go ahead and configure it. So if you've seen any videos or watched a previous video of mine related to setting up your gear switch, you normally go in here and, and you know set your channel five or whatever channel you uh, decide to use to gear. Now, in this case, uh, we have no auxiliary channels configured, and we're going to go down or go up and mess with our pitch curve. Now. By default, you know, for all three modes of this switch, our pitch curve will be the same. Now, what we're going to do is we're actually going to tweak those values, and then in the APM Mission Planner, we're going to take a look and uh, see how these, you know, tweaking these percentages actually impact uh, the PWM sent to uh, the to the APM board. The best thing for you to do is connect your APM board uh, and fire up the mission planner and then have your Turner G9X uh, you know binded to your APM so in doing that as you increase throttle and you know play with your different sticks you'll see the inputs and, and where that comes in handy is when we set this uh, pitch curve um, configuration then we'll actually get to see uh, the radio five, you know, bar right here change. And so what that will do is that actually links to channel five over here and we'll see uh, the different flight modes highlight as the different pulse widths are sent to the board. Okay, so what you'll notice is currently with the default configuration, if I give it a little bit of throttle, you're gonna see, you know, the throttle bar increase, but at the same time, you're going to see uh, the radio 5 or channel 5 uh, bar increase. So what we're going to do is actually, if you look at this pitch curve, you're going to see for each point in the curve, it's a, it's a linear pitch. So, you know, 0, 25 percent, 50 on, on up to 100. So for each point in this curve, we're actually going to set a static value for, we're on the normal. Um, switch setting right now and then we're going to go to ID1 and then ID2 
and we're going to set static values for each of those IDs and you'll see how that translates to the um, different PWMs in the mission planner. Okay, so let's take a quick look at our flight modes. We've gone from radio calibration to flight modes before we actually set our um, pitch curve on the transmitter. So this is really the most important screen that shows you okay. For these range of, of pulse widths, um, you know, puts us in flight mode one, for this range flight mode two, and then for this flight mode three. Now there's six flight modes and I'm sure with a little bit of mixing and so forth you could actually configure all of those, but that's really beyond you know, the scope of this demo and actually my understanding. So maybe in the future I'll, I'll dive more into that. But for now, we're going to configure our three-way switch with each different pulse width to uh, set these different flight modes. Let's begin with a simple test on our flight modes screen. I'm going to increase our pitch curve for the L setting and you can actually see here in the flight mode configuration that one that the PWM changes and also you'll see it jump from the different flight mode boxes as I go down you know as I bring my pulse width down. So for flight mode one let's go ahead and we'll just the PWM is currently we'll bring it down to you know, basically zero. So we're in the normal switch mode right here. And as you can see on the screen, it shows normal. So we'll go down to the next. We'll just bring that down to zero. And we'll zero everything out. Okay, so we'll hit menu to save that. So what that has done is that for the normal switch position right here, we have flight mode one. Let's go ahead and move our switch to the second position, which is ID one. And we'll just bump up the, 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 the curve to, looks like we're at 1284. Let's get it up a little bit higher, 1334. So we'll just say 30% for each point in the curve. And then we'll hit menu to save. So if you look at, that's our flight mode two. And let's go ahead and set that, you know, this can be whatever you want, but we'll go ahead and set that in uh, loiter mode. Loiter mode is just a, kind of a, using a GPS uh, hover mode. Finally, we're gonna go in and we're gonna set our third switch position, which is ID two. And let's just bump this up to where we want a PWM between 1361 and 1490. So 1404 looks pretty good. So we'll just set that 38% for each point in the curve. We'll hit menu to save that. Now you'll notice that looking at our, and, and let me go ahead and set that to acrobatic mode. We'll hit complete to save those settings. And you watch if I toggle the switch, we're in stabilized mode for the normal mode. For switch position one, we're in loiter mode. And then for switch position two, we're in acrobatic mode. Okay, now that we have our flight mode switch configured, we're going to go ahead and give it a test. So, you know, we'll fly and switch between the different modes. Now, let me point out that uh, flight mode two is actually the loiter mode. So we're going to start with stabilize and then ju just jump to uh, acrobatic mode, which will be uh, the third flight mode. We can't do loiter mode just because we're indoors right now. So let's give it a try. Pretty typical, just real, always comes back to level. 
Okay, so let's go ahead and give it a... I'm going to go ahead and put it in acrobatic mode. So there we go. Now you can see it's real responsive. Go ahead and go back into stabilize mode. Right there. So that's basically what's necessary to do a three mode switch configuration with your APM. This is actually APM 2.5. Now, as I pointed out earlier, one of the keys was getting uh, channel 6 from your receiver wired into port 5 on your APM. Um, and this is all through experimentation, so your results may vary and you know, I watched a few videos with different you know, implementations using the mixing, but this from what I found is the easiest uh, and most reliable configuration. So I hope this helps and please let me know if you have any questions um, and thanks for watching.